Mortgage rates have been increasing since 2020 when it was only 2 to 3 percent. We're going to use AI to predict where the interest rates are headed. Specifically, we're going to be using the LSTM, Long Short Term Memory, time series forecasting to look into the future. So this method can be used for any time series, including stocks. So we can see a picture here of the interest rates. So you can see this was a low in 2020, and we're going to see later on if it's going to be going up or down. So the outline of this is we're going to start talking about the LSTM model, read and plot the data, prepare the data, train the data, and predict the future interest rates. So by the end of this video, we will predict and plot the future interest rate for the next several months. So this is a disclaimer. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only and not financial advice. So here is a LSTM diagram that shows you how the general structure works. So there's different components to it. There's a cell state which stores info over the sequence. There's a forget gate that decides what info to discard, zero to discard, and one to keep. There's an input gate that decides what new info to store, and the output gate that determines the next output. So I won't go into the details of how this actually works, but the general idea is that the LSTM relies on some of the long-term and short-term memory to make better decisions, which is some of the issues of the basic recurrent networks had an issue with, which the LSTM solves here. So if we take a look at our code, so we have a LSTM predictor class here. So inside of our init function, we're going to initialize our model here using sequential here. So you can see up on top, we're using TensorFlow. And we made the first layer as a LSTM 50. And then we have two dense layers here with a ReLU. You kind of play around with some of the values to see what works. But here, I'm just using 50, 10, and 1. And then here we have a self uh, model compile. So this will compile our model. And then this sets up our LSTM to be ready for use. So now we're going to take a look at how we're going to read and plot the data. So we saw the plot earlier, but the actual code that does that here is we have a function here called read data that will pass in our file name. And we're going to use the panda to read the CSV. And then here we're going to store the dates and rates into our variables here. And then to plot it, what we want to do um, to avoid some of the dates being too cluttered, we're going to have five-year increments here. And then we're going to store the self.date. We're going to modify a little bit. And then we're going to start up a figure and then plot the date versus the rate and do some adjustments for the x-axis and then finally show the plot. And this will be the plot that we see here. Next, we want to prepare the data for training by structuring the data as a sequence of points. So here we have our x is a training input, y is a training output, and i is the interest rate at week i, and then n is the number of past data points. So here for the first row, we're going to go from the first interest rate all the way up to n minus 1, and then the one, the interest following that is going to be our expected output. And the next row is going to be starting from the second interest rate, because we're doing zero index, and then all the way up to i n. And then the expected output is going to be i n plus 1. So this is how you structure your training input and output data for training. So here we see the code on the left, our prepared training data function. So inside of here, we're going to loop through all of the points inside our df. And then we're just going to shift over by one point every time and then append it to our x and y list. So after we do that, we're going to put, put it into an array and then do some reshaping. And we're going to determine a split percentage for our training, which we're doing 80%. And then here, we're just storing it for later use. Next up, we're going to train our data. So you can see we have a train data function here. And inside train data, we're going to be calling our main function here called train. So if we take a look at the train function, we're calling the model.fit function, which we pass in our X train and Y train, set the epochs and batch size. You can play around with those two values to see what works for you. And then here we have our validation data. So to see the loss, we're plotting the loss for the loss and the validation loss as a function of epoch. So when we plot that, we got to see how well our training is doing. So after we run that, we're going to see this plot here generated. And you can see that our loss is going down. So that's a good sign. Now what we want to do next is predict the future interest rates. So to predict the future interest rates, we have to set up our sequence like we did for training, but now we're actually doing it for future interests that we predict. So 
let's say we have i here, i m minus n, so m is the total data points and f is the future interest rates. So what we want to do is take i m minus uh, m minus n, and then here we have i m minus n plus 1, all the way up to the last interest rate. So in the first row, we're going to have a prediction called f0 based off of the last uh, last endpoints that were in the series. And then now what we're going to do is shift everything over by one. So now we're adding in one of our predictions and removing the first element. So we're essentially taking the last n minus one points and then append on to one of our prediction and then we're going to get a new prediction. So we're going to repeat this process until we get as many prediction points as we can. So that, that way we're using our newly generated data. So Due to the stochastic nature of this, we're actually going to be running this experiment several times and then see what the output looks like. So here is our main predict function that we're using. So we're going to look into 52 weeks into the future, so about a year. And here we have the dates here that we're using. And we have a last sequence function. So, so here we have a prediction is a list and we're going to be storing the predictions. So we have a for loop that goes through the, all the future weeks. And what we're doing is we're making a prediction based off of the last sequence. And then after we do that, we're going to flatten it, append it to our predictions, and then we're going to do the shifting that we just talked about. So we're going to repeat this process until we're done with all of the weeks. And then next up, we have some plotting. So here we have some plot settings. We're going to get the last date, the prediction dates, um, do some get, get some dates that we want for the prediction dates based off of the weeks that we have, and then set up our figure. So we're going to have a plot for our historical mortgage rates, and then we're going to have a predicted section, which is the part that we're predicting, and then we're going to combine the two and put it in a single plot here. So that's what we're doing. So you can take a look at this is our first run that we have. So you can see in the first run that we did, we see that in orange, we expect the rates to be increasing in the next few weeks. And this is our test two. You can see this one exploded up. So that's probably not a good sign. And this is our test case three. You can see in this case, it's actually going down. So you can see the it's very random, but so far we have more cases going up. This is our fourth case. You can see it's also going up in this case as well. And then this fifth case is also going up. And finally, this is our last case is going down. So you can see that it's pretty tricky to do an accurate prediction because it's just basing off of the data that's seen before. But in practice, when you're trying to predict interest rates, there's many factors like the economy that can drive these interest rates, interest rates to go in different directions. So this is just for learning purposes. Don't actually use this for financial advice. But if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.